My name is Sandy Beck, and I am St. Francis Wildlife's Education Director and Teresa Stevenson's friend. If you are here today, it's because Teresa touched your life in some way, maybe even changed your life. She didn't try to. She wasn't demanding. She didn't pressure you or impose her views on you. She taught quietly by example and with humor. You watched her, listened to her, and you wanted to do better. You wanted to be better. You wanted to care more, work harder, laugh more, travel more, learn more, paddle harder, hug bigger, hike further, smile more, be more thoughtful, enjoy more, experience more, and be a kinder, more compassionate person because she inspired all of this. This is Rudy. Rudy is Teresa's beloved, disabled, red-shouldered hawk that she entrusted to me before she left St. Francis Wildlife for a year in Alaska. Rudy and I would like to begin by telling you about the path that brought this amazing woman whom we honor and celebrate today into our world. When Teresa graduated from Veracruz University in Mexico with a degree in biology, she got a job at the Ecology Department of the National Mexican Petroleum Company. She enjoyed working on their sea vessel, identifying and cataloging marine phytoplankton. In her free time, she volunteered with the cetacean biology group, observing whales and porpoises from their ship. She was in heaven. One day in port, she met an American with a beautiful sailboat. He invited her to come sailing. His plan was to sail around the world. It was a compelling offer. So this adventurous woman who had taken an English class while working odd jobs for a while in California, took him up on his offer and Teresa became a skilled sailor and they were married. When their boat docked in Fort Lauderdale, Teresa found a baby mockingbird in the parking lot at the marina. She took it on board, she figured out how to feed it and keep it alive, and she cared for it for a few days. But she knew this Florida bird needed to stay in Florida. So when they were about to set sail and head north, Teresa found a wildlife rehab center and took it there. But when she arrived at the South Florida Wildlife Rehab Center in Fort Lauderdale, she experienced an epiphany. In Mexico, wildlife rehabilitation did not exist. If someone found an injured or an orphaned animal, they ignored it or ate it, she told me. She was amazed that such a place existed and she immediately knew what she wanted to do for the rest of her life. Meanwhile, her new husband was offered a good job in Pennsylvania. So they changed course. They sold the boat, they built a beautiful house in the country, and she became a US citizen. But staying true to her dream, Teresa found the Wildlands Conservancy's Wildlife Rehab Center, and she volunteered there for three years. The joy of having a wild animal in your hand and knowing you're helping it was beyond anything I ever felt, she told me. In 2002, Teresa started her own nonprofit home-based wildlife rehabilitation center Lehigh Wild Care, and with 30 volunteers, they cared for a thousand animals a year. By 2008, Teresa's marriage had lost its magic, and she wanted to begin a new life. She read 
the job advertisement that I posted on the NWRA website for a wildlife rehabilitator and sent her resume. When I read it, I knew immediately that she was the one. Thankfully, the board agreed and Teresa was our new wildlife rehabilitator. She arrived in her big white Ford pickup truck with her clothes, a few personal items, some rehab equipment, and her dog, Poncho. She had her work cut out for her. The hospital and grounds needed a lot of TLC. Teresa immediately rounded up volunteers who were energized by her positive attitude, sense of humor, enthusiasm, and boundless energy, and set to work assessing and treating wildlife, placing non-releasable birds of prey, organizing the hospital, writing a volunteer manual, and cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. She worked harder than anyone. The woman was driven. Several months later, under Teresa's leadership, St. Francis Wildlife had repaired and newly built outdoor cages, well cared for wild patients, happy staff and volunteers, new trails through the 35 acres, and great plans for the future. The hospital was neat, well organized, and guarded by Teresa's famous Mexican curse that would befall anyone who did not return a broom or sharpie to its assigned place. And I had a new, very dear friend, actually more than a friend. Teresa, Bob, and I became family. If anyone could squeeze the joy out of life, it was Teresa. Her glass was always more than half full. Most of the time it spilled over and it dripped on us. When Hurricane Michael whipped through our wildlife sanctuary, Teresa rode out the Category 4 storm with hundreds of her babies in our wildlife hospital. Like all our neighbors, we lost power and phone. At 11 p.m., the generators died, and with them the freezers. We also lost heat lamps, the heating pads, and all the incubators that were warming hundreds of orphan baby squirrels. People traveled from as far away as Fort Lauderdale and Alabama to help with baby squirrels. Hundreds of them. Oh. Little by little, we're putting the pieces back together. The road blocked and thankfully cleared by chainsaw-wielding volunteers. We asked for chainsaws angels with chainsaws and they came. The power out. The hospital kept humming by generators for weeks. We asked for gasoline and they brought it. And a tarp covering a hole in the roof. The good news, all of the creatures inside and out, a-okay. We have to take care of my baby. <laughs> Some of the outside cages smashed by falling trees a few raccoons taking advantage of that opportunity to return to the wild. Teresa barely slept, but she never complained, not once. She laughed and smiled and welcomed everyone with open arms and a warm hug, and you sank into that big embrace. And you wanted to do more, to help Mother Teresa and her little angels. She called all the animals her angels. Every adorable baby squirrel, opossum, river otter, and beaver. Every gnarly old snaggletoothed possum. Every injured barred owl, crow, and bald eagle. Each and every one had her deep admiration and love and complete and equal attention. When she had to humanely euthanize a suffering animal, she first quietly thanked it for its life and wished it peace. That both tore me up and forever endeared me and anyone else who had the privilege to share those moments. But Teresa also knew how to play. 
We paddled so many beautiful rivers and lakes, the Wakulla, Wasissa, St. Mark's, Lake Jackson, Lake Talquin, Lake Lafayette, and off the coast in Appalachian Bay. There was a special Thanksgiving picnic paddle with Kelly and Anthony Kraft on Lake Lafayette. There was a foggy morning paddle with Pat Simmons at St. Mark's. Every one of her birthdays and mine was a kayak party. On Teresa's 56th birthday, we paddled from Bald Point to a deserted beach at Alligator Point. She wished for dolphins, and when they appeared, she swam out to play with them. I have never known anyone else who is like my husband, non-judgmental, generous, thoughtful, and kind, with unlimited energy, compassion, and a fearless sense of adventure, until I met Teresa. Teresa had that old world, uninhibited love of family. When her mama came to visit, I loved to see them holding hands when they rode in the back seat of our car or sat on the sofa. Shortly after Teresa turned 50, she told me that she'd never been to Alaska. She didn't just want a vacation there. She wanted to experience a whole year in Alaska. I'm 50 now, she said. If I don't do it now, I may never have the chance. Maybe my job at St. Francis will be here in a year. Maybe it won't. But I have to do this. And as you know, of course she did. In 2013, Teresa bought a camper top for her big white Ford pickup truck and put her mattress in it. Bob tied her kayak to the top she loaded her two big, recently adopted dogs, Chucho and Lola, and off they were on cross-country adventures. For a few months, she and the dog traveled all over Alaska. Everywhere you look, you see beauty, she told me so many times. They camped in their truck from the Arctic Circle in the north to the Gulf of Alaska in the south. They saw bears, moose, and more bald eagles than anywhere else in the world. Then she discovered Homer, a small spit of land on Alaska's Kenai Peninsula, on a hill with the most remarkable view of Ketchumak Bay and the State Park. She found a little cabin for rent. This is where she wanted to spend the rest of her year with moose and bald eagles for neighbors. Of course, she also volunteered with U.S. Fish and Wildlife caring for injured birds in her cabin. Bob and I flew out to visit in June. Teresa drove five hours north to Anchorage to pick us up at the airport. And the three of us spent four glorious days hiking glaciers, and motoring out on a small boat to see whales, dolphin, doll sheep, and so many amazing seabirds and more glaciers. Then, with her cabin in Homer as a base, we kayaked in Kachemek Bay with adorable sea otters, dolphin, and more pelagic birds, ate in Halibut Cove, and hiked in Kachemak Bay State Park. When Bob flew home for work, Teresa and I spent another beautiful week together, kayaking, hiking, photographing the animals. We had a deal. I did all the cooking, and she carried my kayak. I have never known anyone who enjoyed good food and good beer and wine more than Teresa the way she would taste her first bite of gumbo or oyster, salmon, or apple pie and close her eyes and say, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Cooking for Teresa was a joy. When Teresa drove back to Tallahassee via Mexico and the Florida Keys, of course, 
<laughs> she and the dogs lived with Bob and me for four months. Two sisters, my different mothers, and my wonderful, easygoing husband. Then she finally returned to her job at St. Francis Wildlife and her little house on the pond. Michelle, Kelly, Nancy, Mary, Anne, and all the staff and volunteers were thrilled to have her back home. And she was thrilled to have an orphaned baby river otter to raise. Although Teresa did not like being in the limelight, she did bring her beloved Pepe Possum to our event at White Dog Plantation. And she reluctantly agreed to do a few TV interviews. 35 minutes northwest of Tallahassee, in rural Gadsden County, sits the St. Francis Wildlife Association. The good folks at St. Francis have been healing and rehabilitating injured animals of the wild variety since 1978. Well, we have two objectives, uh, wildlife rehabilitation and education. Um, I'm in charge of the wildlife rehabilitation part, which is taking care of orphaned and injured and sick animals, wild animals, with the goal of returning them back into the wild. Now some might wonder why we should bother to help these animals. This is the answer to that. Most of the animals we admit are injured because of human activities, directly or indirectly. Um, hit by cars, poison, a tangle in fishing line. Then we have our pets, you know, it's a big problem. Cat attacks is a major, major cause for all the little animals we get. Little birds and squirrels and possums, many are attacked by cats. Dog attacks. Uh, dog, uh, my dog found this little turtle and he thought it was a bone and chew all over the poor little animal. Um, so most of the injuries, you know, we are the ones that are causing them. That's why it's so important for us to give them a second chance because if it wasn't for us, they would not be here in the first place. So this so is a delivery of an injured animal. There yes. are three of them, it looks like. Yes. Uh -huh. You're fine. The same. <laughs> Didn't know they put water in there, so I soaked my pants. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and the box is overkill. Oh, it's a tiny dog. Thank you. Wildlife Rehabilitator and Facility Director Teresa Stevenson. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Good so morning. tell us about uh, St. Francis. Well, St. Francis is a non-profit organization and we take care of injured and orphaned wild animals uh, and we do educational programs. Okay. Right now we have many, many uh, hundreds of babies at the hospital. Is it time for baby season right now? You yeah, guys are getting one of those in. yeah, it's part of the baby season. Lots of squirrels, lots of possums, lots of fawns. Yes, wow. we're busy, busy. And you have Lini here with us. Talk about us yes, about Lini. We have Lini. Uh, this is a red shouldered hawk. He came to us one year ago. He got hit by a car, mm. and as a consequence, he cannot see with this eye, and he kind of forgot how to be a hawk. He, you know, kind of a brain injury. So he's very docile, he's, he's very, very nice for educational programs because he just stays there and looks pretty. But he's one of the, the several animals that you guys take in, that you uh, rehabilitate, get them back to, to being the, the wild animals that they are. But you guys said you also use them for educational programs. How many animals, how many wildlife do you think have come through your program? About 3,500 animals per year. 
And as you said, it kind of baby season, you guys are getting those in. What can somebody do if they do find a wild animal, a baby, uh, in their backyard or, or in their neighborhood? Where should they bring them? Well, first, uh, we would like you to call us. Okay. Because first, we need to determine if the animal really needs help or not. Sometimes, you know, we think they need help, but they're just being, you know, being wild animals. So first, call us, and we will, you know, go from there. If the animal needs help, you can bring it to us at San Francisco Wildlife. She would much rather be back home with the baby beavers, raccoons, bunnies, and owls. But during the winter, when work at the hospital slowed down, she continued exploring our big world. She spent weeks in Borneo and Thailand with elephants and orangutans, and she traveled with her mom to Argentina to see the Aguazu waterfall. Her mom always wanted to see that waterfall and vacationed with Nancy in Mexico. Then two years ago, Teresa made the difficult decision to return to Mexico to live with her sister, Luz Elena, and help care for their beloved mother. She spent her last night in Florida with Bob and me enjoying good food, wine, and being very silly. <laughs> Teresa was glad to be with family again. And also, of course, she found mangy dogs to heal. She raised homeless kittens and baby squirrels orphaned by Hurricane Grace. She and her mom and Luz Elena also spent some restorative weeks at her aunt's home on the coast, where she and the dogs ran and swam on the beach. Teresa dreamed of one day retiring by the sea, so she bought some property in Baja, Last summer, she spent a month on her property camping in her big white board truck with Lola, and she sent these photos. Rudy wants to talk also. I've never known a woman who worked harder or could always find a ray of sunshine in the bleakest of moments. Her fuel was true love and respect for every single animal, tiny baby squirrel to magnificent hawk. And humility, Teresa always brushed off praise or thanks with, it's a privilege to hold a wild animal in your hand. She once told me, I'm lucky because I came to this country I found a baby bird. I found my calling. And now I can also make a living doing just what I love to do. Teresa, today we are all thinking about your life and the gifts that you shared with us. Your sense of humor, your ability to make everyone feel special, your heart and generosity, your love of wild beauty and your compassion. Thousands of owls, hawks, eagles, vultures, songbirds, squirrels, opossums, river otters, beavers, turtles, and more are alive today because of you. And so many of us are better humans because we knew and loved you. It is up to all of us now all of us to keep Teresa's laugh, passion, and light alive.